Hey, and welcome to With Grey, a cooking channel where I want to share with you some of the recipes and techniques that I've picked up over the years as an enthusiastic home cook. And hey, maybe we'll both learn something along the way. I thought I'd start with one of my favourite things to cook in an absolute crowd pleaser, the steak sandwich. So let's crack into the ultimate steak sandwich with grey. Firstly, we'll kick off with the caramelised balsamic onions. These have a really nice sweet and sour element to them and go well with almost anything, from this steak sandwich to grilled cheese on toast. Start by thinly slicing two large red onions and then get a pan on medium heat with a tablespoon of grapeseed oil. And once the oil is hot, introduce the onions. Season with salt and pepper and cook stirring occasionally until softened and translucent. We're not trying to get colour on these, instead just trying to soften them up a little bit to release some of the onions natural sugars. So if the pan is too hot, just turn down the heat a little bit. Next, we're going to add a couple of heaped teaspoons of brown sugar to help with the caramelisation and also to help balance the acidity of the vinegar. We'll let that go until all the sugar is dissolved and the caramelisation begins. Add about a third of a cup of balsamic vinegar, which in my case was what was left of the bottle that I had in the pantry. Cook the balsamic vinegar down until you've reached a syrupy consistency and it glazes the onions nicely. Evacuate to a bowl and set aside. Then we can turn our attention to the garlic aioli, for which we will need a small handful of parsley, the juice of one lemon and some garlic. Take your parsley and run your knife through it a few times until chopped finely. Then take your mayo and add a couple of tablespoons of your parsley to it. You can gauge this part by eye, but just make sure there's not so much in there that it's a green paste by the end of it, and not enough that there's only one to two specks of parsley in the whole mixture. Add in three teaspoons of garlic paste. Alternatively, you could mince the clove of garlic here, but be careful as fresh garlic's a bit more potent than this, and you don't want to find yourself with garlic bread for the rest of the day. Next, roll out a lemon to break down its cell walls, which will release more juice. Then cut it in half. Take a quick moment to curse the lemon gods for giving you so many seeds, but then remember we have the power of editing on our side and that everything will be okay. I've only used the juice of half this lemon here, but if you like your aioli more on the acidic side of life, then just add more to your taste. Mix, and your sauce is done. And now, it's time for the star of our show, the beef. I've got a thick cut sab of rump steak here that I picked up from the Aussie Butcher and Kimu, which we're going to coat lightly with oil to help the seasoning stick, and then dust liberally with salt and pepper on both sides, because this is a thick cut of meat, and well, it'll need it. We're going to take this to a medium rare internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit, or 57 degrees Celsius, and the best way to ensure you nail that temperature is with a digital thermometer. I grabbed the PureQ Instant Red Thermometer from Low and Slow Barbecue Supplies and it's been great, even as a bottle opener built in. Plus, if you don't like your meat medium rare, then you'll be able to accurately cook it to however you like. I'll leave a steak done this chart down in the description below. Now yes, the camera failed me here and I didn't get the money shot of the steak being set off over high heat in the stainless steel pan, but trust me, it did. And now with nice browning on both sides, it's going into a 400 degree Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius oven to come up to temperature, which will take about 12 minutes. While the steak is taking a vacation in the heat, we can turn our attention to the salad greens, which works really well with the pepperiness of rocket, but mixed greens with mescaline will do fine here too. To make the dressing, we're going to drizzle a couple of tablespoons of good quality olive oil into the bowl and follow that up with the juice of one lemon. Finally, chop another handful of parsley and add that to the salad greens. If you really want to take this next level though, also add in about one teaspoon of grated lemon zest and a handful of parmesan shavings. Toss lightly to combine, and that salad is done. If we've got the timing right, the steak should be ready to come out of the oven. If not, just keep checking the temperature of the steak periodically, and once the internal temperature of the meat has reached the doneness you require, move it off to the board to rest. Keep the pan juices to the side for the time being, we've got a plan for those shortly. Get yourself a halved ciabatta roll and toast on a hot griddle pan until you see some decent scorch marks on the bread. This will add a nice textural element to the bite and also make the bread stand up a bit better to the incoming toppings. Thinly slice the beef, cutting against the grain, unless you like beefy chewing gum, making sure you snack along the way until no beef remains. Now remember that pan that was in the oven? Be careful because in case you were wondering, yes, that's still hot. But with auto restored, place your sliced meat back into the pan from whence it came to reacquaint itself with its juices and mix until each slice is thoroughly coated. And now it's finally time to assemble a sandwich. 
start by leathering your aioli onto both sides of the toasted ciabatta bun and follow up with a handful of the salad greens. Next, top that with as much of the beautiful glistening beef as you wish and then a layer of the caramelized balsamic onions. Crown the sandwich with the top of the bun and admire your creation. And now it's time to eat. I hope you've enjoyed this inaugural episode of With Grey and we'll have a crack at making this dish for yourself and your family. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll see you on the next one.